fun to talk about the chonky tracked server tours and the new Admet Codex, and it seems that Cataphron Breaches might well be a melee unit now. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where today we're going over another couple of data sheets from the new Admet Codex, focusing on the new Cataphron Destroyers and Breaches. We'll talk about both their data sheets, look at their damage outputs, talk about the buffs and synergies that you can give them, and talk about the squad builds that I'd be thinking about using in game. There's certainly a unit that I find really quite interesting. Arc Rifle Cataphron Breaches are one of the most competitive units in the previous codex, so I certainly found it interesting to see how they were doing now. Let's start out by talking over their data sheets then, and we'll go with the Cataphron Breaches first. These are the more heavily armoured and have both some ranged and combat capability, whereas the destroyers are more lightly armoured and armed with bigger guns. In any case, cash from breaches remain a troop's choice. They can now only be taken in squads of 3 to 6 models. You can't get 12 of them anymore, but they do remain at 35 points a model, though you have to pay 10 points extra if you want to upgrade the arc rifle to the torsion cannon. For 35 points and packing a big gun, they do actually have a pretty impressive stat line. Their movement 6 inches, and there's no penalty to their advanced rolls anymore. Their weapon skill and ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength and toughness 5, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and they've been bumped up to a hefty 2 plus save with a 6 plus invul. That's a really chunky and tanky profile for a 35 point model. Small arms are going to be near enough irrelevant against these guys with that toughness 5 and 2 plus armour. It's only really going to be anti-elite and anti-tank weapons that they're going to have to fear. Interestingly enough, they were changed from infantry to bikes. I think just to represent that those track units probably aren't going to be clambering into high buildings very easily but they do have a special rule that allows them to move through breachable terrain as if they were infantry, so you could still potentially start them behind line of sight blocking ruins and then move in front of them to shoot. They are Cult Mechanicus units, not Skitari, and they're Obsec troops, but they aren't core. The lack of the core keyword is a big negative to them, unfortunately. I can kind of see why Games Workshop did it, they have enormous damage output, and to be honest, if they had access to the full amount of buffs on the Admet Codex, they'd be insanely ridiculously scary. It is a bit of a turn-off for them though, they just don't have quite as much synergy as core units do. For their ranged weapons, we have either the Heavy Arc Rifle or the Torsion Cannon. The Heavy Arc Rifle is Heavy 2, 36 inch range, Strength 6, AP-2 and Damage 2, and it's particularly good against vehicles, getting plus 1 damage and always wounding them on at least a 4+. plus. It's quite a good generalist profile, those shots are going to be at least relatively efficient against whatever they're fired at but compared with in the old codex where you could get that custom forge world with the exploding 5s and 6s, their damage output just really isn't what it used to be. I'd see the heavy arc rifle as a bit more chip damage at long range, as opposed to something that you're going to rely on to sweep the enemy off the table. At ballistic skill 4+, plus, you're only likely to land one hit with each heavy arc rifle. Then we have the torsion cannon for 45 points per model. This is heavy 1, 48 inch range, strength 8, AP-4, and damage D3 plus 3. A very hefty heavy anti-tank weapon this one, it certainly lands with a lot more punch when it does land, though it does cost a fair bit more than the heavy arc rifles, and it's really quite painful to have such a good gun that only ever hits half the time, or less if you have modifiers. We'll talk about their damage output in just a second, but I think that they're relatively well balanced against the heavy arc rifles. However, aside from durability, the other thing that was drastically beefed up in the new codex is their melee. Those arc claws are now strength 6, AP-3 and damage 1, and they get plus one attack and the arc special rules versus vehicles. They're a little bit better for anti-horde, though to be honest I think that most people are going to be running the hydraulic claws now. Those will be getting three attacks at a whopping strength 10, AP minus two, and flat damage three. They outperform the arc claws against vehicles, and I'd say are just generally the better choice. I find it really quite interesting that now breaches seem to do more damage in melee than they do at range, meaning that the nature of the unit has just changed really quite a lot. We'll do their damage output after we've looked at the destroyers, but in general breaches are far tankier, far more dangerous in melee, but not quite as strong at range due to the loss of their buffs and synergies. Next we have the Cataphron destroyers, again a lot of similarities with the breaches, they've gone down a bit in points, 40 points per model with Grav and Phosphor Blaster, plus 10 points for the Plasma Culverin, and plus 5 points for the Cognis Flamer. They have essentially the same stat line, still hitting on 4s just like the breaches, but they're a little bit more lightly armoured, they have a 3 plus save rather than a 2 plus. Still though, that's not too bad for 40 point models, particularly ones that deal quite a lot of ranged damage. I would just bear in mind that with the durability as well, being bikes mean that they won't be able to benefit from light cover areas on the table, so they won't get the improvement to their save quite as easily. They'll need Shroud Sarm if they want light cover. Their ranged weapons have far more bites than the Breacher ones. The Heavy Grav Cannon for the 40 points is Heavy 5, 
36 inches, strength 5, AP minus 3 and damage 1, and damage 2 versus anything with a 3 plus save or better. That is pretty respectable on a fairly tough model like that, particularly at the long range. Although its profile is fairly generalist, it does have a couple of negatives though. It's really going to suffer against anything that's minus 1 damage, such as the whole Death Guard army, and it's going to be very underwhelming with anything that's worse than a 3 plus save, say Drakari Raiders or Chaos Greater Demons. Still though, a bunch of strength 5 shots with good AP is hard to argue with. In particular, these things will chew through Space Marines very efficiently indeed. The other option is the Plasma Culverin, heavy D6, 36 inches, strength 7, AP minus 3 and damage 1, and then you can Plasma Overcharge for strength 8 and damage 2, making them great against tanks and heavy infantry alike, though you do take a single mortal wound for every hit roll of a 1. Even if it doesn't slay a model anymore, this is still actually genuinely quite scary to the Cataphrons, as now there's no way to get a simple reroll ones to hit, say by a Tech Priest Dominus sitting nearby. Otherwise, they have a secondary ranged armament, a Phosphor Blaster for a 24 inch range, strength 5, AP minus 1, damage 1 shot with rapid fire. It's not much, but it ignores dense cover, and I guess it'll provide a little bit more anti infantry shooting. Or you can upgrade for 5 points to the Cognis Flamer, far more damage with D6 plus 2, strength 4 shots that auto hit within 12 inches. For me, I think I'd typically take the Phosphor Blaster. The Cognis Flamer just really incentivizes you to get close, and close is not really where these firepower units want to get. I think I'd just take the free small boost to ranged shooting, rather than piling more points into a weapon that only ever functions if the enemies got really close to you. I guess maybe you could upgrade one to have a Cognis Flamer for a bit of point defense, just to clear out pesky enemy units that might be getting too close. Finally, of course their melee is nothing compared with the Breachers, they only get strength 5 attacks at AP0, so they really don't want to be caught in combat. Overall, destroyers are still at least fairly tanky for the points, and are far more of a dedicated gun platform role, though again, loss of core is not particularly handy for them. Next, I thought we'd take a look at their damage outputs, and these are the amount of wounds that they'll cause per 200 points worth of models. That's a little bit under 6 arc rifle breaches, a bit over 4 torsion cannon breaches, 5 grav cannon destroyers, or 4 plasma culver in ones. For the breaches, to be honest, the damage output just isn't particularly spectacular for a 200 point unit. Their arc rifles will kill around about 5 guardsmen, around about 2 or 3 2 wound space marines, and an average of around 6 wounds to a vehicle with a 3 plus save. Of course, they'll be far worse against tough monsters, where they don't get their arc benefits against. The torsion cannons are a bit more specialised, they'll be frankly pretty rubbish against infantry, maybe killing around about 2 marines or guardsmen, but will be far better against vehicles or monsters, averaging around about 7 or 8 wounds to a toughness 7 one. Just very dedicated anti-tank there, though invuls will make this drop off significantly compared with some of the other options. If we look at the destroyers, then generally they do tend to just outshoot the breachers against general targets. The numbers here assume that they're getting a single phosphor blaster shot each at 24 inch range. The grav cannons are really quite impressive to be honest, they'll clear out a squad of 10 guardsmen, around about 7 or 8 marines, which is very good indeed and around about 7 or 8 wounds to a toughness 7 or 8 vehicle without an invul. Of course they're far worse against minus 1 damage mechanics, or against multi-wound models with a poor armour save that they don't get their 2 damage against. The Plasma Culverins have fairly similar numbers to the Grav Cannons, their damage doesn't care much about the save of the target, so that is a benefit, but even in just a 4 model unit of Cataphron Destroyers, if you are overcharging, you'll take you around about 2 or 3 mortal wounds per shooting phase. That means to deal this damage, you're killing around about one Cataphron Destroyer, so losing about 50 points of your own models. Not exactly ideal. Personally, out of the Destroyer upgrades, I far prefer the Grav Cannons. They don't work against everything, but I think that that Mortal Wound drop-off is just a bit too steep for the Plasma. Finally, we have the Breacher's melee damage output, which is why I think the Breachers might now be more of a melee unit than a ranged one. Again, this is just under a full squad of 6 Breachers. Their Arc Claws will kill around about 9 or 10 Guardsmen, 3 Space Marines, or about 9 or 10 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. Of course, they're far worse against monsters or other tough things that aren't vehicles. The Hydraulic Claws are a little bit worse against Hordes, killing 7 guards, but they're better against Space Marines, killing 4 or 5 of them, and are particularly strong against Gravis Armor, and they outperform the Arc Claws even against vehicles, so do 11 wounds to a toughness 7 or 8 vehicle. Hydraulic Claws just really are very impressive in my opinion, and I think it's pretty stark just how much damage they do compared with all of the ranged variants. So perhaps Cataphron Breaches are now going to be used a lot more as a durable melee unit, with their range shooting just being a nice additional benefit. So let's talk about getting a bit more out of our tracked servitors with the buffs and synergies on the units. First of all, they will get Canticles of the Omnisire, where the usual ones are very relevant for these guys. They're one of the best users of Benediction of the Omnisire, 
the one that allows you a single hit, wound and damage reroll. To get the most out of that one, it does incentivize you to use small units of breaches or destroyers, and it's particularly strong with the single shot torsion cannons actually, making the include of one torsion cannon in a breacher squad not a bad option at all. Otherwise, Shroud's Arm will certainly up their range defence, giving breaches an effective 1 plus save, and if they do get tangled up in melee later in the game, then Litany of the Electromancer to give them a minus 1 to hit is no bad thing either. There's plenty of benefits from the various Forge Worlds as well. Mars again will incentivize multiple small units with their single hit reroll, and I guess in theory you could get the Wrath of Mars to work on them, maybe if you took a big unit of destroyers with the Grav, though I suspect that you're going to be better off with other targets for this, maybe like Skitari Vanguard. Otherwise, Lucius can allow Deep Strike, allowing you to get the jump on the enemy with optimally positioned damage output. Stygis 8 can give you a minus 1 to hit on the backfield units. Riser could work for both variants, making Breach and Melee very scary with a plus 1 to wound. It could have your Hydraulic Claws wounding Imperial Knights on 2s. And of course, their Plasma Specialist stratagem, making the Destroyer's Plasma Culverins go all the way up to damage 3. You might be getting to a point where it's worth eating those mortal wounds by then. A grip in R, which for some reason I forgot to list, gives you an extra AP minus 1 at half range, not too bad on those arc rifles, and also their stratagem can allow you to bump the Cataphrons up to toughness 6 each. If you are taking a big unit of breaches, that one seems at least fairly reasonable, though it will only affect certain weapon types, things that are strength 5, 6 or 3. Finally, the Data Horde Forge World can give you a plus 2 inch movement to Cataphrons, Though to be honest, I don't think that this one's going to get taken very much. I think if you're taking Data Horde, you're going to be building around vehicles, and those rerolls on Cognis weapons or regenerating wounds are going to be more tempting. In general, as troop units with impressive stat lines, Cataphrons can be pretty good in most Forge Worlds. Of course, not being core, they're locked out of quite a lot of important buffs, but there is still a surprising amount that characters can do for them. A Tech Priest can always heal them up, could be pretty frustrating for the opponent when they're Toughness 5 and have a good save, but other than that, most of the actual data sheet options don't help Cataphrons. The only one who can is the Techno Archaeologist, who allows Cataphrons to perform actions as if they're infantry, and allows them to keep on firing while they do actions. I guess it's not bad if you're going down the Cataphron strategy very heavily, though I think for most army lists, you're likely just to be better off taking a cheap squad of Rangers or Vanguard. They'll perform the action all by themselves for 40 points, which is less than the cost of the Techno Archaeologist, and then can be pretty handy obsec and provide some shooting after that. A few of the Holy Order traits can help out Cataphrons. The Genitor one can get you sixes in melee to auto wound. I'd say it's okay on the Hydraulic Claws, but I would bear in mind that they're massively high strength, so they'll tend to wound things in melee quite well anyway. The Logi Advanced trait can allow them to ignore cover, again, which is okay, but you do have quite a lot of high AP on the guns anyway. And the Artisans one can allow them to fall back and shoot and charge. For a gunline Cataphron unit, maybe like those Grav Cannon Destroyers, that could be pretty handy. At least you could get some firepower out of the unit, even if the enemy manages to tag them. Out of the relics, maybe the most important one is the Temper Copia, to make an enemy unit fight last. Could be nice just to run up alongside a melee breacher squad, that way you, you know that your opponent isn't going to do anything sneaky like use that interruption stratagem on you. For character buffs in general though, I think that a fair few of these are fairly usable, but you won't really be handicapped too much if you just run them completely unsupported. They do what they do quite well on their own, and it means that you can focus the character buffs on units that can better receive them, things like core units such as Iron Striders, or the Skitari Rangers or Vanguard. There's a few stratagems that could be handy for them. Elimination Volley is their signature one. When you fire with the Cataphron unit, it means that any 6s to hit will auto-wound the enemy. The value of this really does depend on how big the unit that you're firing is, and the strength of the weapons that your Cataphrons are armed with. I'd say the most bang for the buck that you can get out of it is on those Cataphron destroyers with the Grav. If they're targeting something heavy, they'll only be wounding on fives, so you could get quite a lot of damage out of this. For example, a five-man Grav cannon squad shooting at, say, a Guard Lehman Ross, that would average you around about seven damage in a single turn of shooting, whereas with Elimination Volley applied, that would average you around about 11 or 12 wounds. A four or five wound damage increase for just one CP isn't too bad, though it does get a fair bit less efficient if you are using it on smaller units. Otherwise, acquisition at any cost could be kind of handy, their leadership isn't amazing at 7, and allowing an auto pass for one command point if they're near an objective is quite a good thing. You really don't want to have 35 point or more models fleeing from the board. Finally, you can get overloaded systems for one command point. If you chip off some wounds off a vehicle with arc weapons, then it means that you could have them function on a degraded profile the next turn. If your opponent's got a big nasty damage dealer vehicle, then that could actually pay for itself quite nicely. 
Finally, for an interesting and powerful buff, he can run Cataphrons as part of a defence cohort, that formation from Warzone Charadon, the Book of Rust. That's the one that locks you out of any Skitari units at all, but gives you a few powerful buffs, including all of your units being minus one damage if they're either within their own deployment zone or within three inches of an objective. When you can get that buff to work, it takes their durability from just good to absolutely outstanding, and it might genuinely be one of the strongest ways to run an entire Cataphron army at the moment. There's also a couple of handy stratagems as well, including a 1 command point 1 for plus 1 to hit. Though it is a bit restrictive, you have to be in your own deployment zone and targeting enemy units in theirs. There's also a fire in melee stratagem, could be handy if you get locked up. Overall, for destroyers and breaches, they'll generally do what they do fairly independently. There are a few things that you can use to buff them, but they're by no means mandatory. Here are a few ideas for some squad builds, depending on the battlefield role that you want them for. Perhaps for backfield objective holders, you could think about a unit of 3 Cataphron Breaches with Arc Rifles. 105 points for 9 Toughness 5 2 plus armor save wounds is serious toughness for the points cost, and of course their obsec. You could maybe think about upgrading one to a Torsion Cannon, just to use those Benediction of the Omnisire rolls on the turn that you get that canticle. If you want them to slant a bit more into ranged firepower though, you could think about using 3 destroyers with the Grav Cannons and Phosphor Blasters. They're still pretty tough and obsec but we'll be chipping away with far more firepower with 15 grav shots and a few scattered phosphor blaster ones. As I said, I think that the plasma culverins aren't quite as strong as they used to be, but if you did want to make use of them, then maybe riser would be the best option. Six destroyers with plasma culverins would cost you 300 points, pop the two command point plasma specialist stratagem, and you're up to three damage plasma weapons. It could potentially do some hefty damage to a vehicle or two in a turn. It averages around about 18 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle, or about 6 dead space marines in Gravis armour. You'll probably lose at least one Cataphron due to using the overcharge, but that's still a fairly serious amount of firepower at quite a good range. I'm not convinced it's quite worth the investment, but certainly sounds good fun. Finally, you could think about using a Breacher unit to move up into the midfield, maybe 5 Breachers with Arc Rifles and Hydraulic Claws, just for a bit more durability against blast weapons, and a bit more flexibility in terms of squad coherency. Maybe you could run them alongside a Genitor or Artisan Tech Priest with a Tempercopia, either getting some auto wounds on sixes in combat, or fall back and shoot and charge, make the enemy units fight last, and be able to heal one of the things if you need to. That to give you 15 very tough wounds at toughness 5 with a 2 plus armor, and genuinely quite scary melee, they're quite likely to go through most standard vehicles in a single round of combat, and will be particularly nasty against anything with 3 wounds. For really durable ab mech melee threats, I think they might be one of the best options, particularly in Riser for boosted charges and plus one to wound against heavies. So putting it all together, does it make Cataphron Servitor strong right now? For raw range damage dealing, I feel that breaches aren't really what you're going to want to go for, so we've been mainly looking at destroyers. While they do chip out a fair bit of damage, I would say that they're unlikely to combat all that well with core options, say Iron Striders or Skitari Rangers or Vanguard, buffed up to the max with characters. Generally though, I would say that there's still a niche for them. You're only going to be able to character support so many units in your army, and the Cataphrons are fairly tough and have obsec, so really aren't such a bad option for parking on objective and forgetting about, while they just deal out some long-range grav cannon fire. I would bear in mind though that they are fairly susceptible to hit roll modifiers, only hitting on 4s means that minus 1 to hit will drastically reduce their damage output, far worse than things like Rangers, Vanguard or Ballastari. For the Breachers, I'd say the main thing that's going for them is both durability and melee damage. Breachers are a really tough unit now, not just within the Admech Codex, but just compared with other things in 40k in general. They seem very solid to hold an objective, provide some nasty counter charge threat, and at least chip away with some firepower with arc rifles each turn. I have a feeling that we might start to see some midfield blobs move up, and provide a similar sort of melee threat role to things like Bulgrin, Bladeguard Veterans, or other tanky melee units from other codexes. Overall, I'd say that Cataphrons are still usable, but I'm not sure we're going to see entire armies of Breachers like we would in 8th. They now have stiff competition in the troops role, I'd say that Rangers and Vanguard are likely to be more competitive. They're great for holding objectives, and you can get loads of silly numbers out of them by stacking buffs. I feel like just for raw firepower, Iron Strider Ballastari might be the way forward. They seem to put out some of the heaviest firepower in the decks for the points, though I'm not saying that there's not room for Cataphron Destroyers as well. So anyway, let me know what you think of the Cataphrons down in the comments below. Are they looking good? Are you going to be using some in the new Abmech army list? And what sort of builds catch your eye the most? In any case, thanks for listening. If you'd like to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to Orspets Tactics, 
where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, including loads more for the Abmeg. I'll be trying to do a fair few more unit reviews like this, and a few more general discussions of their codecs. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos and find them useful, I would just like to mention one way that you can help support the channel, which is my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. If you were thinking about picking up some Catafron Destroyers or other Abmeg stuff, Element Games is a discount retailer based in the UK with 10-20% to off Games Workshop's miniatures. If you were going to buy something, you could click through the link down in the video description, order through them, and a small amount of the money goes to help support Auspets Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. Can just be a way to help support the channel if you were thinking about buying something anyway. For people over in the USA and Canada, I do also have an Amazon affiliate link that works in basically the exact same way. If you were going to buy something off Amazon, whatever it was, click the link, and a small amount goes to help support Auspets Tactics without costing you any more. A big thank you to you guys who have been using those links, it is very nice of you. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.